Tonight our special guest is Jackie Oliver, a sex therapist specialising in sexual malfunction and emotional resistance. Jackie has just completed a brand new book called Do This One Thing and Your Life Will Change Forever. Jackie Oliver, welcome to The Beat Goes On. Well, How are you Jackie? I'm really good. We were trying to work out when you were last on The Beat Goes On. And neither of us can remember. Jackie, you are welcome to The Beat Goes On. You discuss a, a, a subject which is, um, you can have the biggest wars in the world, like Syria, Afghanistan, all those, Vietnam, all those wars, but none of them, none of them compared to the battle of the sexes, or the battle of the bedroom. Or the battle of the bedroom. <laughs> And uh, that's, you've devoted your life to uh, solving the problems in the bedroom, haven't you, between male and female? But look, the exciting thing is that you're in here today, Jackie, because a, a great new book is coming out. Now, um, I'm going to read out the, uh, the title and it'll go up on the screen, but what a great idea. Doing this one thing will change your life forever. And every one of our viewers and myself are saying, what is that one thing? What is that one thing? But uh, are you allowed to tell it or uh, should we uh, skirt around it? Because you want to sell books, don't you, Jackie? Doing this one thing is knowing how to eliminate the emotional contamination, the emotional resistance which contaminates a relationship. A lot of times people become emotionally over-involved or over-involved in their emotions. Mm. So for example, when people, uh, especially couples, they're talking on a subject that is important to either or both of them, then we get caught up in an emotional response, an unresolved mm. emotional response. So it may be an ongoing problem, it may be an ongoing intimacy problem, mm. or it may be related to work, it may be related to children, it can be any aspect of your life. And when it's an ongoing problem, there are many thoughts about it. There is often a lot of resistance to the thoughts and the resulting emotions mm. that are tied in with that problem. Mm. And so then you go to communicate that problem with your partner. There's all this baggage. And then there's all of this other stuff that comes up and you never yeah. get to talk about the one thing that you wanted to discuss. So nothing ever gets resolved. Nothing ever gets resolved. So in order to resolve the problems, mm. you have to resolve the emotional response. And this is what I teach in my programs and in my book. So what's an emotional response that's, that gets in the way the most? Oh, there's what's fear. What's an example? Mm? There's fear. fear. Yeah. Uh, when there is a sexual dysfunction problem, I call them a malfunction problem. Mm. There is frustration. There mm. is disappointment. Mm. There is anger. Uh, there may be anxiety. If a person has a sexual dysfunction mm. problem, they're like, well, am I ever going to be able to sort this? Am mm. I ever going to be able to feel fulfilled? Mm. Am I ever going to fulfill my partner? Mm. And then with all of those thoughts and the related thoughts, mm. because they all tie in and they get mm. bigger and bigger and yes, bigger. exactly. Hey, we're all the walking wounded, aren't we, on this one? So um, how do you see a happy relationship? How do you see a, a not a malfunctioned relationship, but a, a relationship that's functioning? What, what are the good signs about a relationship that's working? A relationship that is working is where both partners are emotionally balanced. There is attraction alignment. So they are emotionally and sexually attracted mm. to each other, which requires both partners to be functioning sexually, mm. so sexual function. And when you have those three things, then your needs are met. Yeah. And when your needs are met, then you're not needy of that other person to do this so I can feel better, change this thing about what you're doing mm. so I can feel better. And what I see with a lot of clients mm. is they'll come to me with a sexual dysfunction problem and they'll solve the sexual dysfunction problem. I used to just focus on solving the sexual dysfunction yeah, problem. But there's more. But there is so much more because mm. if you don't remove that emotional resistance mm. that is taking place in every other aspect of your relationship, mm. then you're not going to have the sex that you want. There's a great saying that says, love me for who I am, not hate me for who I'm not. What seems to be bothering most couples? They don't know how to communicate mm. what's most important. So they have all of these 
requirements mm. of another person. See, when you don't know how to deal with an emotional response mm. so that it's neutralized, it's gone within seconds, mm. then you require the other person to change or to make a concession mm. to make you feel better. A woman will talk a lot because mm. she thinks that she's going to feel better at the end of it. Mm. And as I explain in my book, it's not mm. the actual talking that yeah. makes her feel better. It's the switching and the allowing mm. in that moment that she stops fighting what's going on in her mind. Mm. That's when she instantly feels better. See, we will put across, I need you to fix this or I need you to fix that or I need you to change how you do this or mm. I need you to change how you do that. Which is the... Wow, that's the Which biggest. is what we're all doing. Yeah. And you know why that happens? Because we want to feel better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're not being in charge mm. of feeling better ourselves. Most people don't know that they have the ability to switch their attention mm. from all of the problems and the inner turmoil and the constant mental chaos that's driving them crazy they don't realize that they can switch to feeling better, mm. to neutralizing all of that emotion in a moment's notice. First step is to stop fighting the fact that you're resistant to that behavior. When we're focused on that which is annoying about mm. a person, we begin experiencing more of that. Mm. So suddenly we're not putting our attention on what we like about that person, all their other wonderful qualities, we're just thinking, but he does that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then instead of, in that moment, allowing the emotional response to pass, which is fully explained in my book and in yeah. my programs, instead of allowing the discomfort of that moment, we either Ex switch to the thoughts yeah. about them, yeah. and the thoughts grow and amplify, and then suddenly we've yeah. got this mountain which was about that high just a moment before, mm. Now your mind is just completely full of this problem. Mm. And then so when your partner walks in the door, I say you arrived home first and he walks in the door instead of, hiya, sweetie, how was your day, big mm. kiss? It's like, yeah. And then because we don't like people to know when, <laughs> I was going to say, we don't like people to know when we're feeling out of sorts or we're feeling bad or we're be feeling depressed but then again a lot of times we want the other when we're in an emotionally mm. resistant state we want that other person to know that we are not pleased <laughs> with them <laughs> and so the poor guy has no idea what's yeah. going on he's yeah. just come home from his day and yeah. she's been seething about it yeah. all day mm. because those thoughts it and the related emotions are just going around and around and around and you're saying you have a cure i do have a cure wow and you've got a great chapter in your book, um, How to Allow an Emotional Response uh, to Pass with the Ease of a Sneeze. It's in That's the book. Right. When you allow an emotional response to pass, mm. you're not thinking about it. Mm. You're not fighting the physical sensations of it. You're not thinking about the physical sensations of it mm. and making it bigger because the emotional response, it completes within a couple of seconds. It's like forming a new habit. It is forming a new habit. Mm. Doing this one thing will change your life for, forever. You do have it. It's in the book. Doing this one thing that will change your life forever. Uh, is there a lot of work involved with it or is it, uh, it can be learned easily? That's the main thing. It but can, it's one thing that will change your life. It's one thing and it's yeah. applying it yeah. to it's, all the different situations it's a in technique, your life. And it's only in your book. This is true. It's only um, In my programs as I, well. Look, um, I would love you to tell us, but we want people to buy your book, don't we? So, we do. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody wants to feel better than yeah, they yeah. do now. Yeah. I can transform someone from feeling frustrated and insecure and yeah. isolated to being a happy, radiant and confident person mm -hmm. who doesn't feel like they're drowning in their emotions, doesn't feel like committing suicide because they don't mm -hmm. know how to deal with themselves, never mind any of their problems. Mm -hmm. I've encountered so much in my life and so many insights mm. and answers to solve the problems. Yeah. You enable to to be able to solve the bigger problems in life, mm. you need to be able to feel emotionally 
balanced yourself because that's what enables you to have clear mm. conversations mm. with other people and to communicate mm. an issue you may have instead of going around and around and around to all these issues that you've had mm. in the past and then never communicating mm. what you actually want. Jackie, thanks for coming on the program today. Uh, Baby boomers. Well, this is a show aimed at the baby boomer and a lot of people, a lot of young people look at the baby boomer and say they shouldn't be thinking about sex anyway. They're, they're too old for it. Is it still a, a, a vital part of an older person's life, uh, the sexual activity? Sexual activity. For a, for a male, a male retains his sex drive well into his 80s. Mm. And so that's why it's so important to solve any sexual dysfunction problems as they arise. It could be problems getting hard or problems staying hard during foreplay or penetration mm. or intercourse these can all be solved i've, I've solved i my oldest client was 86 i solved his erectile dysfunction problems wow. easy mm. no problems and the thing is that this is why it's so important to solve the emotional contamination mm. in a relationship because a guy can have complete sexual function but if there's that emotional contamination there, his partner isn't interested in sex. Mm. And so what I do is I solve, in my Real Easy Love programs, mm. I solve that emotional contamination mm. so that there is more empathy between both partners and his partner wants to have sex more often because she doesn't have any problems. Statistically, uh, 30% of men have premature ejaculation, 40% mm. of men over 40 erectile dysfunction, 80% of women have problems achieving orgasm, mm. and 20% of those women can't orgasm at all. Well, so there, there's a battlefield already, isn't there? there? There's, yeah. a, there's a battlefield, mm. and yet there is no sexual malfunction problem that phases me in the least, mm. in the least. And the book is called Doing This One Thing Will Change Your Life Forever. Thank you, Jackie, for a great book that could be beneficial to all us baby boomers.